So the countenance of the friend sharpens the countenance of the other friend. And we come here, I mean, we come here every Tuesday to sharpen our battle axe, to sharpen our instruments of warfare, to prepare ourselves so that we can be workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, to be equipped and empowered to serve you with effectiveness and efficiency. Oh Lord, tonight again, open our eyes of understanding. Amen. Wind another round of truth into our spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Amen. because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 We're still in Joshua chapter one and still looking at a few things there. Tonight, we are looking at the call to biblical leadership. As you look at leadership generally in the world, there are many similarities between biblical leadership and secular leadership. However, there are also striking differences between the two. Biblical leadership issues out of a redemptive relationship with God. Somebody may not be saved and may become the leader of a nation. But if somebody is going to be a true leader in the house of God, you must have a relationship with God, you must be saved. So biblical leadership issues out of a redemptive relationship. Only those who are saved qualify for service in God's kingdom. That's why I said, be ye clean, be ye clean, that bear the verses of the Lord. That's why some people that wanted to serve God in Psalm 50, God said unto the wicked, who has told you to take my covenant in your mouth? I don't need your service. You are not living right. So you have no, 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 no right declaring my word. God was saying, you can't serve me in that kind of a dirty, crooked life. So it's important. Joshua had served Moses and he had been called Moses minister. Now he is to serve God and become God's servant. Joshua is to receive Moses' rod and run with it, just like Elisha received Elijah's mantle and prospered with it. The next generation of leaders is to receive the baton and run with it. The question is, am I ready? Are you ready? to heed God's call to leadership? Are you ready to throw overboard your preconceived ideas and get on board God's idea about biblical leadership? What is the first thing that we learn about biblical leadership? It's a call. And it's a call to an undying mission. In Joshua chapter one, verse two, Joshua chapter one, verse two. The Bible says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise. The missionary may be dead, but the mission is alive. The messenger may be dead, but the message is alive. The Lord giver is gone, but the law abides. Moses, my servant, is dead, but his legacy lives on. So the call to biblical leadership is a call to an undying mission. The assignment God gave to Moses originally was to lead the people into the promised land. Because when you read in Exodus chapter three, God said, I, I want to send you that you may bring out my people out of Egypt. I'm taking them into a land where we make an honey. That was Moses' original assignment. Moses may be dead, but that vision lives on and that mission remains relevant. God is never the author of abandoned projects. God does not mastermind an abandoned mission. If he says he's taking his people to the promised land, he will get them there. Even if the leader appointed dies, he appoints a new leader, that project must be completed. 
that mission must be finished. Call to biblical leadership is a call to an undying mission. Moses may be there, but the assignment is not there. The missionary may be there, but the mission remains alive. The messenger may be gone, but the message is still vibrant, relevant for today. We need to understand that. It's a call to an undying mission. And God was always saying in this book of Joshua, he will refer them and say, keep the law that Moses, my servant, gave unto you. The Moses is gone, yes, but the law he left behind, that law is still binding. That law is still relevant. That law is still active. That law is still alive and well on planet Earth. All to an undying mission. Moses may be dead, but the vision lives. Moses may be gone, the mission remains relevant. God now called Joshua to this undying mission to carry it to its ultimate conclusion. Do you remember that when Elijah went to Mount Carmel, God gave him three assignments. God said, as you go from here, anoint Elisha to be a prophet in your stead. Anoint Jehu to be king over Israel. And anoint Isaiah to be king over Syria. Do you know that Elijah was only able to fulfill the first one. He couldn't finish the, the remaining two. When Elisha took over from Elijah, he had to complete it. It was Elisha eventually that anointed Azahel and Elisha that anointed Jehu. He sent somebody to go and anoint Jehu and said, call him out and say, and pour the oil upon him and when you are finished, run away. But it was an assignment originally given to Elijah. But he couldn't finish it. But God doesn't forget it. Because Elijah is gone does not mean God's assignment is terminated. It's an undying mission. That mission must go to its ultimate end. That mission must eventually be fulfilled. Very, very important. I pray that the Lord himself he will help every one of us to understand that the call to biblical leadership is a call to an undying mission in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And God is calling us and telling us if they call, call to an undying mission. The vision always outlives the visionary. I want you to, to understand that tonight, that the vision will outlive the visionary. We are casting vision. We are taking the church to this point. But one time comes, our time is gone, our time comes to an end and we go, but the Lord continues. The vision continues. The vision does not die with us. So we need to understand that the vision always outlives the visionary. Number two, the mission always outlives the missionary. Think about it. The people that brought Christianity to Africa, the Methodist missionaries, the Anglican missionaries, the Baptist missionaries, they established a lot of schools, Baptist Academy, Baptist High School, Methodist High School. Most of those missionaries, they are gone today, but their legacy abides. The mission continues. Their mission outlived them. So we need to understand the vision always outlives the visionary. The mission always outlives the missionary. The message outlasts the messenger. Moses, the lawgiver, is gone. But can't you see? The law is still relevant. And God will tell them, do according as Moses, my servant, has instructed you. Moses is dead, yes, but the law is left behind. The message is left behind. That message is relevant. That message is important. That message lives on. Very important. Please, just a moment. Let's adjust the light.
Isaiah. The prophecies of all these people, we are still living them. They are still as relevant today as ever, and they will still continue to be relevant. So we need to understand that the vision of God's visitation of his people outlived Joseph the visionary. You know, Joseph told the people, I said, God will surely visit you. I'm going. I will not be here when God visits you, but I'm sure God will surely visit you. But when God visits you, not if, when God visits you, pick up my bones and carry me. We are going together to Canaan. That was Josh, I mean, uh, Joseph. The visitation of God outlived Joseph the visionary. The mission of establishing a decent temple for the Lord outlived David. We can call him the missionary. David wanted to build the temple for God. He was the one that, you know, that had the vision. But God said, no, not in your time and not by you. He made all the provisions for all the things, and but he couldn't build it. Solomon built it. By that time, David was gone. So we need to understand that even though God is giving us vision today, that vision will live beyond us. And I pray that the usefulness of your life will go beyond your physical existence in Jesus' name. Amen. And even when you have gone, your legacies are still impacting lives, still changing lives. Very, very important. The legacies that we leave behind must transform lives. And that's what happens over here. So the call to biblical leadership is a call to an undying mission. What do we learn from there? Number one, Moses, the Lord giver, may be dead, but that is not enough reason to jettison the law. The law abides, and the law is still binding. The Lord abides. Though the law giver has passed away, God says, Moses, my servant, is dead. But that's not the reason for you to throw the law away. Although Moses did not give up, he's dead, yet Joshua was emphatically and categorically told that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate in it day and night. Why? But the law giver is gone. Yes, the law giver is gone, but the law is still binding. The law is still relevant. The law must still be read. The Lord, you must still abide by the law. You must still study the law and guide your life by the law. The lawgiver is gone, but you cannot jettison the law. The law abides. Number two, Moses, the leader, may be dead, but the leadership principles that he left behind and pinned down, they are still valid and relevant. In fact, we are told that Joshua did according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Moses. Look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 13. Moses was the leader. Yes, the leader is dead. But how about the leadership principles he left behind? How about the leadership example that he left behind? That, is, that doesn't die. That's what didn't die with the leader. The example lives on. The principles are permanent. The principles abide. Joshua chapter 1, verse 13. Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, the Lord your God had given you rest and had given you this land. And then he went on. He was reminding those people, Moses is dead. But the covenant you made with Moses, that covenant is still binding. Remember. And those people have to say, yes, we remember. And I pray that we also will remember in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 4, verse 10. Joshua chapter 4, verse 10. He says, for the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished, that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua, and the people hasted and passed over, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. Moses is no longer here. He is dead. Yes. Joshua said, the principles he left behind, 
we must live life by it. We must run the nation by it because they are still valid. Look at verse 12. And the children of Reuben and the children of God. And now the tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. Every single time. Look at chapter 9, verse 24. Chapter 9, verse 24. And he answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told thy servants how that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore, what? Therefore, we were so afraid of our lives because of you and have done this thing. So the legacies, the principles that Moses left behind, they were still intact, even though Moses is dead. Moses is buried, you know, but the principles were still there. So number two, we see Moses as the lawgiver. The lawgiver is gone, but the law remains and is relevant. Moses, the leader, is gone, but the leadership principles he left behind and he penned for us, they are still relevant and we must still live according to them. Number three, Moses, the servant of the Lord, may be dead, but divine service continues. And new servants like Joshua and like me must step in to carry on the divine task. Yes, Moses, the servant of the Lord, is gone, but the service of the Lord is not, is not yet done, it's still there. So Moses, my servant may be dead, but divine service continues. So who is going to serve? Yes, a new, a new Joshua must step in to serve. A new you must step in to serve. A new me must step in to serve because the divine service continues. Moses, the messenger of the Lord is dead, but the message abides. And that message is ever fresh, and that message is ever relevant. The message is greater than the messenger, and the message will always outlive the messenger. You know what the Bible says? The prophets, do they live forever? Of course, the answer is, 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 uh, is obvious. They don't physically live forever, but their prophecies live forever. Amos is gone. But his prophecies are still relevant. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Habakkuk is gone. They are all gone. But their prophecies, they are relevant. The prophecies, the message always outlive the messenger. We have also been called to an undying mission. What I'm trying to tell you tonight is that the call to leadership is an undying mission. And don't just be busy about activity. You must make up your mind that I am going to leave something behind when I'm gone. Principles that can be shaping lives. Messages that will be relevant and making impact. Examples that other people can read about and follow. We are called to an undying mission. Don't let everything about you die the day you die. You remember the, 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 the people in the Old Testament, in the, in, in the Old Testament, people like Abel. The Bible says, he's dead yet speaketh. How can somebody be dead and is yet speaking? Because the legacies are still there. The messages are still there. The prophecies are still there. The law he left behind is still there. The principles he left behind is still there. The legacies are still impacting lives. Dead yet speaketh. I pray that your usefulness will go beyond your physical life. Amen. That even after you have gone, people can still be enjoying your relevance. Hmm. You've been gone for many years, but your impact is still fresh. I pray it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen. So the call to leadership is a call to an undying mission. We have been called to an undying mission. There remains much land to be conquered. There remains many souls to gather into God's eternal kingdom. The Great Commission is an undying mission for contemporary believers. 
go into all the world and preach the gospel. Peter did his own. Apostle Paul did his own. All the other people, they did their own. They are gone. It's our time. We need to step in because it's an undying mission. That great commission, is, it goes on. After we are gone, the next generation will step in and carry it on. The call to leadership is a call to an undying mission. Number two, the call to leadership is a commitment to the unfinished mission. God called Moses to take the children of Israel into the land of Canaan. It's, it is unfortunate that Moses allowed the people to provoke him to the point that he called them rebels, to the point that he had controversy with them. And eventually God had to discipline him and say, yes, I know my people are rebels, but it's not in your own mouth to call them rebels. And for that, for that reason, they are not getting into the land of Canaan. He prayed three times and God said, don't, don't raise that issue anymore. I made up my mind. Go to Mount Nebo uh, at the top of Pisgah. Look over. You will see the land, but you will not get into the land. And he saw the land and God gathered him up. But God is not going to abandon that mission. It's an unfinished mission. God raised Joshua and said, the mission that Moses should have completed, which unfortunately he couldn't co complete, you need to complete it. And Joshua had to make a commitment to that unfinished mission. Bring the people to their ultimate destination, the land of Canaan, to give them the inheritance that God had promised them. And I'm asking you, are we also committed to the unfinished mission? Joshua's call was not a call to a new mission. You know, some people are always looking for a call to a new mission. They want to break new ground. They want to do what nobody has ever done. They want to, you know, it's not always so. It's not always so. Joshua's call was not a call to a new mission. It was a call to complete Moses' unfinished mission. Joshua chapter one, verse one. Joshua chapter one, verse one. The Bible says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. That was what Moses should have done. But now that he's dead, he couldn't do it. God said, step into Moses' shoes, carry the people over. Take them to the ultimate destination that are prepared for them. So when Joshua was stepping in, he was stepping in to complete Moses' unfinished mission. It was not a call to a completely new mission. Of course, there are times that God will call us to a new mission. But in the case of Joshua, it was a call to help fulfill the assignment that God had given to Moses. And he's no less a leader because he's trying to complete what somebody else has done. You know, that, that's the, uh, and sometimes that, that's the, the danger. You know, sometimes when you, maybe for one reason or the other, we have to change a pastor. Maybe the pastor has moved by virtue of emigration. Maybe the pastor has changed city because of his job or one thing or the other, and a new pastor has to come there. You know, some pastors don't understand. They think that they have to do everything new. My brother, some programs that that pastor has been doing that are effective and good, carry it on. It will benefit the church. We don't just change for change sake. Say, I want to stamp my own identity. I want to do things in a new way. New things are not always the best. If what has been done before or what is being done is very good, is very effective, is making impact, continue it. But some, some, some leaders that are say, no, 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 no. They want to erase, you know, the old leader. They want to erase every single thing about the old leader to stamp their own new identity and they make a mess of the whole thing, not understanding the way 
God does things. Here was Joshua. He was stepping in to complete the assignment that Moses could not complete. And you know why? Because God is never the author of abandoned projects. God is never the author of unfinished mission. He will always finish it. God never leaves his projects half finished. Although the leader in charge may pass away, God will raise up new leadership to consolidate and complete the task. Unless we are ready to be committed to the unfinished task, we may never receive a call from God. You know, those who are saying, no, 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 no. I want something completely new. You may never be called. You may never be called. You are not ready to serve, to help, to complete what somebody else started. You may never be called. What the disciples do? It was a completion of the, of the ministry that Jesus started. That's what the apostles carried on. He was seeking and saving the lost. And when he was gone, the disciples stepped into it, going into all the world and preaching the gospel, seeking and saving the lost. So it may, it may not be a call to a completely new assignment. It may be a call to complete an ongoing assignment which the old leader was unable to complete for one reason or the other, maybe because of debt, maybe because of transfer, maybe because of relocation, whatever it might be, but that project must be completed. So unless we are ready to be committed to the unfinished mission, we may never receive a call from God. There are believers who want to break new ground. They want to tackle what nobody has ever tackled before. They forget that God may not be interested in the construction of a new highway, but in the maintenance of the old path. You know what he said? Search for the old path and walk in it and you will have rest for your soul. Say, no, God, but we want to create a new highway. God said, no, I'm not interested in the creation of a new highway. I want to maintain that old path. Maintain it for me and let people seek the old path and walk in the old path. We, we need to understand God. So this passage in Joshua, very, very significant. So when God said, Moses, my servant is dead, but he didn't finish his assignment. And I'm not going to abandon that assignment. Joshua, step in into Moses' shoe, arise, take the people, complete that assignment. And Joshua was ready. Commitment to the unfinished mission. Some never amount to anything in the kingdom because they never want to play second fiddle. They say, no, 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 no. I don't want to complete what Moses started. Let me start something completely fresh. You may never do anything in life. God may never use you for his glory. He's the one that dictates what you do. Very important. Others in other generations, they have faced the challenges of the unfinished mission. I told you about Elisha. Let, let's read First Kings chapter 19. Let, let's read the, the, the past because you, you will see that we are not the first. You say, well, the kind of anointing God gave me is a, it's not anointing to complete somebody else's assignment. It's anointing to break new ground. Maybe not. Maybe it's you that you are mistaken. First Kings chapter 19. Let me read to you from verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Azael to be king over Syria. That was the first assignment that God gave to Elijah on Mount Horeb. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abemehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy, in thy room. Three assignments. Anoint Jehu, anoint Azahel, and anoint Elisha. As he went, he anointed Elisha. But that was about the only one that Elijah was able to do before he was gone in the chariot of fire. 
Are those assignments not to be done? They will be done. Are those assignments not to be carried out? They will be carried out. God will not abandon his work. Second Kings chapter eight. So what happened? Second Kings chapter two, Elijah was already gone. For second Kings chapter eight, I want you to see in verse seven. It says, and Elisha came to Damascus and ben the king of Syria was sick. And it was told him saying, the man of God is come either. And the king said unto Azael. So that's how Azael came to Elisha. And eventually, Elisha declared him to be, that he's going to be the next king, like anointing him to be king over Syria. But it was an assignment given to Elijah. But my friend, if you step into the shoes of Elijah, you must complete Elijah's unfinished tasks. You must fulfill and finish Elijah's unfinished mission. Very important. Look at chapter 9. Verse 1, chapter 9, verse 1. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Guard up thy loins and take this box of oil in thy hand and go to Ramon Gilead. And when thou comest either, look out there, Jehu, the son of, of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him into, carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thou said the Lord, I have anointed the king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. And that was what happened. Again, it was Elisha that commissioned the anointing of Jehu. But it was not an assignment that was primarily given to him. It was an assignment that was given to Elijah. When Elijah had gone, the task has not been completed. God will not abandon that task. The new leader must finish it. And if God is putting you in a place and you are not ready to finish the unfinished task, he will never call you. Because God is not the author of abandoned projects. God is not the author of unfinished missions. They must be finished. And if as a new leader in that place, it's part of your responsibility to finish those unfinished missions, to finish those unfinished tasks, to complete those uncompleted tasks. Very, very important. You see it in the scriptures. Elisha didn't say, well, I'm a prophet. My own calling is different. No. What Elijah left behind undone, not because he was negligent, but he didn't have the time and it's time to go at home. Elisha had to complete it. I pray that as the Lord is teaching us, we also will be committed to the unfinished mission in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So Elijah had to carry on Elijah's unfinished mission. Solomon faced the challenge of David's unfinished task, building a temple for the Lord. Solomon didn't originate that. David did, but God said, no, don't build for me. Your son will build. But if you read, David left a lot of things for that temple, left the the, the plan for the temple. As wise as Solomon was, Solomon was not the one that, that did the plan of the temple. It was already, you know, but it was already done by David. Solomon just completed the whole task. Is he not the new king taking over from David? Or if you are the new king taking over from the old king, the assignment that the old king wanted to do for God's glory that he is not able to do, you must complete it. There must be commitment to the unfinished task. The disciples are to carry on Christ's unfinished mission of reaching out to lost souls. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. The disciples, they continued it. The disciples are to carry on Paul's unfinished mission of, of appointing elders in every city. Look at Titus chapter 1, verse 5. Paul had to tell Titus, I don't have enough time to stay in, uh, in, in Greece. So I'm, I've not been able to do all I am supposed to do. So Titus, see to it. What is Titus to do? Titus chapter one, verse five. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that is in Greece, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city 
as I had appointed him. If Paul had stayed longer in that place, that's what he would have done. Appoint elders in every city, organize the church, make sure that you know people, I mean, God's people are not left without shepherds. But Paul said, unfortunately, I couldn't stay in Greece. I had to move on. I left you there. Now that's my unfinished task of appointing elders in every city. Titus, make sure you carry it out. Appoint elders in every city as I have appointed the very important. God's call to leadership implies that we are ready to be committed to the unfinished mission of our predecessors. We may need to enter into the labor of others. John chapter four, some people come into Christian leadership and they don't get this concept and that's why they fail. They want to do new things. Say, so I don't want it to be like the style of that individual. I want a unique style. It may not always be. That may not be always God's will. God may just want you to stay there and finish that unfinished task. Continue in that style and finish it the way it has been started. John chapter 4, verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months and then come at harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are ripe, for they are white already to harvest. And it that repent receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon he bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. You know what he's saying? Some other people have prepared the ground. They did the sowing. Now it's harvest time. Christ said, I'm sending you into the harvest field to go and harvest. It's not all your work. You are finishing the work that some people started. Some people till the ground. Some people did the cultivation. Some people sowed the seed. Some people weeded and fertilized. Now everything has terminated. Unfortunately, the people are not on the scene. I sent you to reap where you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you are entered into their labors. They, they sold, you are entered into their labors. So that is commitment to the unfinished task. Some people sold, if they sold, and nobody to harvest, it will have been wasted effort. If nobody sold and you come into harvest, there will, not, there will be nothing to gather. So it's both. That's why the sowers will get their reward. The reapers will get their reward. But the reapers are continuing the work of the sowers. They sowed and we are reaping. That's commitment to the unfinished task. And you need to understand that every single time. You know, Many times, people don't know about this Chinese evangelist, John Song. John, J-O-H-N, then Song, S-U-N-G. John Song was a mighty, mighty, mighty evangelist. But you know, during his time, he evangelized a lot in China, evangelized all those in Indonesia and Co, but there were no results. But after he had gone, the next generation that came, there was a big revival. You can read about them, revival in Indonesia, the gentle breeze of Jesus. You can read in all those books about the revival. But you know what? It was John Song that prepared the ground. He sowed the seed. He did the, the groundwork. But that generation that experienced the miracles and the power and the, you know, the revival, they came in to reap the harvest. John Song is going to have his own reward. And these people also, that didn't let the harvest waste, they will have their own reward. Other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. We must be committed to the unfinished mission. I pray the Lord himself will help us to be committed to the unfinished mission in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Number three, courage for the unparalleled mission. God told Joshua, be strong and very courageous. 
Be strong and of a good courage. Three times God was telling him, the mission of possessing the land is awesome. It's unparalleled. It's not going to be easy. Many battles to fight. River Jordan to cross. Jericho was to bring down. Giants to confront. A lot of battles to fight. It's going to be, it's, 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 it's an unparalleled mission. But we need courage. Courage to face the enemy. Courage to go through River Jordan. Courage to go down the walls of Jericho, believing that Jericho is coming down. Courage to go out and fight, you know, those fierce enemies on the land and possess our possession. Courage for the unparalleled mission. The mission of possessing the land is awesome. It's unparalleled. Nobody has ever done it in the history of, in the, history of the world. For these people were attempting something great, something awesome. The strength and the size of the opposition, the, you know, of, of, the, of, of the opposing army have the tendency of striking fear into our hearts. When you look at the opposition you face, wow, how are we going to go? We have no chariots. These people have chariots. We are just ordinary people. These people among them, there are many giants. How are we going to face them? We have no weapons. These people you know every area of their economy is weaponized. What are we going to do? Don't worry. Courage. Courage. With God on our side, we are on the victory side. Amen. Courage. Courage to face the enemy. Even though we have no chariots, even though they are living in, in fenced cities, it doesn't matter. Courage. The nature and the number of the enemy, enemy weapons can easily paralyze people that are unprepared. The voice and the noise of a Goliath can easily demoralize and intimidate a fearful Israel. But it couldn't do that to, to David. I defy the armies of Israel. Everybody is running away. He has not thrown an arrow. They are running away. He has not fired the bullets. They are running away. Only speaking. Fear. But we need courage. Courage for this unparalleled mission. We are going to face Goliath. Courage to face Goliath. For this reason, God had to repeatedly tell Joshua to be strong and of a good courage. We need courage to face the battles of life. If we are ever to emerge victorious, courage is the platform on which conquests are obtained. There is no other way. Courage. You know where we are? Some people are going to be attacking you, uh, you backsliders. And why did you do that? You shouldn't have done what you have done. They want to intimidate you. Courage. Courage to get on with God's assignment. Courage to stand your ground and move on, conquering territories. Courage to face, you know, the assignment God has given you and come out victorious. Courage. Very important. They tell you, go and hide yourself. You tell them like, 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 like Nehemiah, should such a man as I flee, I'm not fleeing anywhere. I'm here. Let the opposition come. I'm here to face them. Courage. This is an unparalleled mission that God has given us, bringing souls into the kingdom, expanding the kingdom, exalting the king. What an unparalleled mission. And we need courage. Courage to carry out that assignment. Courage to do what God wants us to do. Courage to be who God wants us to be. Courage to lead effectively the way God wants us to lead. We are not following. We are not following anybody. We are not copying anybody. You know, sometimes people are asking me, but how are things? I don't know. I'm just focused on what God wants me to do. What is happening to them? I don't know. I'm not following it. I'm focused on what God wants me to do. I have a call. I have a mandate. We are not just copying people or just you know, running church because other people are running church. We have a mandate. There is a call. There is a call to an undying mission. There is a call to, you know, there must be a commitment to the unfinished mission. And there must be courage for the unparalleled mission. 
And tonight, I'm calling you also that the call to biblical leadership, as you are coming along with us, as you are joining us in this race, the call to biblical leadership under this umbrella, abounding grace Christian ministry, the call to biblical leadership is a call to an undying mission. Make sure that by the grace of God, where you are, you will leave a legacy. Where you are, you will leave a message. Where you are, you will make an impact and that your relevance will go beyond your physical presence in that place. Moses, my servant, is dead, but the service of the Lord continues. Moses, the Lord giver, was gone, but the law that he left behind was still active and relevant. Moses, the, you know, the, the, the leader, was gone, but the leadership principles he left behind was still shaping the nation. Moses was gone. The messenger was gone, but the message he left behind was still impacting the nation. Leave legacies behind. You know, I look at it. By the time I'm gone, all the outlines I've written, generations to come will still be enjoying those outlines. They will still be reading and understanding the scriptures. That's a legacy. You leave it behind because the outlines will not die. You One will die and be gone. The outlines will remain. People, if Jesus dies, many generations will read those outlines and say, ah, now I understand this passage. So this is what he's saying. Leave a legacy. We must make up our mind that the call to biblical leadership under this umbrella, under this abiding, I mean, abounding grace, Christian ministry, you must see it as a call to an undying mission, as a, I mean, commitment to the unfinished mission, courage for the unparalleled mission. We don't need any cowards in our midst. We need people that are courageous, people that are ready to move in the strength of the law. God told Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. You are going to distribute the land unto these people. Yes, there are giants in the land who will conquer the giants. Yes, there is River Jordan to cross who will cross the Jordan. Yes, there are formidable obstacles like the walls of Jericho. Don't worry, those walls, they are coming down. They will crumble, they will tumble. But you need courage, courage to move, courage to move, courage to face the enemy. Hurry to preach the truth. Hurry to stand in your place and be a voice for God in your generation. I pray that as God is calling you to that biblical leadership tonight, you will make up your mind and tell God, I agree. I accept this call to the undying mission. I accept to be committed to this unfinished mission. And Lord, I receive the courage for the unparalleled mission. Let's rise up and pray and tell the Lord that you will help us. The call to biblical leadership. The call to biblical leadership. The vision always outlives the visionary. Remember that. The mission always outlives the missionary. Remember that. The message outlasts the messenger. Remember that. The prophecies outlives the prophet. Remember that. Leave a legacy, an enduring legacy, an enduring legacy, and a, a legacy of godly example, a legacy of, you know, biblical principles, a legacy. You know, you, you are leaving things behind. We are going to pray that our leadership will not be an empty leadership. Your usefulness will still be felt even after you have gone. It will, it, 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 the relevance of it will be beyond your physical presence in that location. Even after, years after you have left that location, your influence is still there. Your impact is still being felt. You are still shaping the church. Pray and tell the Lord, the call to biblical leadership is calling you tonight. It's calling you to an undying mission. God is calling you to, a, I mean, telling you to make a commitment to the unfinished mission. What Moses has not been able to finish, Joshua must take it and complete it. 
what Elijah had not been able to finish, Elisha must take it up and complete it. What Jesus was not able to complete because of the shortness of time, the apostles must pick it up and carry it forward. Very important. What Paul the apostle was not able to do, Titus must pick it up and complete it. Commitment to the unfinished mission. And you need the courage for the unparalleled mission. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. You are showing us another, another, another angle of biblical leadership that very many people have overlooked. And yet, if we overlook it, the consequences will be costly. We may make a mess of leadership where we want to establish a new highway, but you are saying, no, I need the maintenance of the old path. I don't need a new highway. Oh Lord, I'm praying that we will do ministry the way you have ordained it in Jesus' name. Amen. That we will do our leadership the biblical way, not with the wisdom of the world, not with the way they run leadership in the world, but the way the Bible says it, the way you have mandated it to be, and so will it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight you are calling us to an undying mission that after we have gone like Moses have gone, like, like Moses has gone, it should not be our end. Moses, the lawgiver, was gone, but the law he left behind was still active and relevant. Moses, the leader, was gone, but the leadership principles he left behind was still shaping the nation. Moses, the servant of the Lord, was gone, but the divine service continued. Moses was gone. The messenger of the Lord, but the message he left behind was still shaping the nation. Oh Lord, I pray that by the time we finish our assignment in the respective locations where you have put us, even after we are gone, we will leave legacies behind that we still, even though dead, we will still be speaking. The yeah. outlines were right. We still be helping people. The messages that we preach, people will still be listening to them in the audio and in the video, and their lives will still be impacted. The counseling we gave, it will still be challenging people and helping them. The godly example that we leave, people will still be reading about that godly example and following it. Oh Lord, let the usefulness of our life, let it be beyond our physical existence in Jesus' name. Amen. Let our relevance in any location, let it be beyond our physical presence in that location in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I pray that tonight, every one of us will make a commitment to the unfinished mission, that when we take on the leadership in a place, we don't just write off every single thing that has been done. The things that are, are, are good, we continue it. We establish them. We preserve them. We consolidate them. Oh, Lord, help us to be committed to the unfinished mission in Jesus' name. Amen. Give us the courage for the unparalleled mission. What, what a mission to be called co-laborers with you. What a mission to help to seek and to save that which was lost. What a mission to be partners with the Almighty. Oh God, we will not hide ourselves. We will be courageous to stand in our place. Courageous to preach the truth. Courageous to carry out your assignment. You will give us that courage in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty and victorious name, we pray. Amen.